It is truly good to see everyone this morning, and it's good to have our visitors with us today. You know, we're all rather familiar with Jesus Christ, the man that we read of in our Bibles. We know that he is our Savior. He is the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. We recognize him also as that great prophet that Moses talked of in Deuteronomy chapter 18. We know Jesus Christ is our one and only mediator between God and man. We recognize him also as our high priest and as our king. He is truly the king of kings and the Lord of lords. But in Luke chapter four or 2 verse 49, we notice that Jesus Christ is now introduced to us as a businessman at a very early age. At the young age of 12 years, we find Jesus Christ having a very serious purpose. He was about his father's business. And if we're going to be truly followers of Jesus Christ, we too need to be about God's business. And his business is that for saving souls. From the parables of Jesus Christ, we learn that Christianity is comparable to a business enterprise. For example, in Matthew chapter 13, verse 47, we see that the kingdom of heaven is compared to a merchant who goes out seeking goodly pearls. Just a couple of verses later, in verse 47, it says the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a fisherman's net. Of course, many fishermen like <clears throat> Peter and James and John, they made this their livelihood. They considered it a business. Now, Paul called living the Christian life as a vocation. And he encouraged the Ephesians to walk worthy of it. Now, as essential as various trades are, Christianity is the most important business transaction we can ever engage in. It not only has to do with time, but it also has to do with eternity as well. Paul said, having the promise of life that now is and of that which is to come, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. The temporal pursuits of this life are to be made only as a means to an end. We ought to give very, very serious consideration to Christianity. In fact, Jesus said there in Matthew 6, that we are to seek first the kingdom of God, which is the church, and his righteousness, talking about his commandments. If we truly do love the kingdom, we should be willing to give all that we have for it, just like that goodly that merchant looking for those goodly pearls. Now in the marketplace, in the business world, in our jobs, Christians have the greatest contact with the world. As we consider evangelism in the marketplace and in these other places, we need to consider the capital that we have on at hand, the maxims of business, as well as the profits that we might be able to gain. Now, the most important investment that can, we can ever make in Christianity, of course, is self. Paul said in Romans 12, verse 1, present your bodies a living sacrifice. And that is to be our reasonable service. The churches of Macedonia first gave of their own selves to the Lord. And then it says that they gave beyond their means, beyond their power. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 through 5. Because they were willing to give self. They were willing to give whatever they needed. And then some. Of course, one has to be a Christian. You have to be born again to be in the firm or be in the church of which Jesus Christ is head. When we accept the Lord's invitation, we are obligated then to invite others to also partake. This is not just for us. It's for everybody. And people respond to others who are interested in them and interested in their problems. We need to show interest in other people. Let's look at the capital or the assets that we have on hand that, we can help, that helps to us to evangelize the world. Now, we should, of course, use every grace that God has given to us. We need to ask ourselves, do we have little faith? If we do, let's use it, and it'll grow. Is our love weak? We can cultivate that by showing concern for others. Double your prayers, double your actions toward other men. 
It's worth more than any type of, or any amount of money that you might be able to give them. Our minds are to be invested for God. There in Matthew chapter 22, verse 37, Jesus gave the first and greatest commandment, to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, and mind. Businessmen know how to organize and to run a successful business. You and I, as Christian businessmen, we need to set our minds in organizing and running successful Christianity. If we want to save people, we're going to have to take the gospel to them. It's not going to just automatically appear before their eyes. That is our obligation as members of the Lord's church, as Christians, those who are, belong to Christ, is to take the gospel to the world before it's too late. Solomon in Ecclesiastes 9 verse 10 says, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. He says, For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. We're not to wait too late. Now is the time to do it while we still have breath in our bodies, and we're to do it with our might. We need to learn to develop our talents, just like those men in the parable of the talents who went out and traded and they gained more talents. We're to grow. Our bodies are to be invested for the Lord. Again, in Romans 12, verse 1, Paul says, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. We present our bodies, first of all, in baptism, putting on our Lord Jesus Christ, putting that old man of sin to death. We bury him in the watery grave of baptism. But this action also has lasting effects. We become a living sacrifice now that is holy and acceptable unto God. The whole man has to be given to God. Not just our bodies, but also our minds. The whole of man. You know, there's many people out there who are willing to pray and give a lot of money to help convert the lost. The problem is they're not always willing to give of their service. We need to give everything we can. We need to give both. And again, as I said, money also needs to be invested for the Lord. There are fortunes out there that need to be cleansed. I want you to listen to the words of Jesus in Luke chapter 11, verse 41. He says, To give alms of such things as you have, and behold, all things are clean unto you. You know, I think the worst place in the world to be would be at the Dead Sea. Fish can't live in that water. Birds don't swim in it. It's no wonder they call it the Dead Sea. But you know, just a little ways north of that, probably about 70 miles, I don't even know the, the exact amount, but there is a place called the Sea of Galilee. And it is teeming with life. That's where you read about all the apostles and others fishing because it was teeming with life. What's the difference between the two seas? Well, we notice that the Jordan River empties out of the Sea of Galilee. And it helps to cleanse that lake. But the Dead Sea is quite opposite. The river Jordan flows into it, but nothing comes out. Giving is a cleansing process. The Dead Sea only takes, it never gives. Paul said, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which reapeth bountifully, or soweth bountifully, shall also reap bountifully. 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6. You know, it does take money to make the great machinery of the church run like it's supposed to. And we are its only investors. The world's not going to give to the church. That's our obligation. Time, something else needs to be invested. We need to be devoted to the work and the worship of the Lord. In fact, Jesus, knowing the value of time, said in John 9, verse 4, I must work the works of him that has sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. We're going to have a limited amount of time on this earth. And God has as much claim to our time as he does our money. Are we willing to give the same amount as we do our giving? And sometimes I think I hope that we give more of each. And I think a lot of us can. Opportunities need to be invested in the business of the Father. 
Paul said that we are to redeem the time, Ephesians 5 verse 16. That means buying up opportunities, not waiting always for the opportunities to come to us. It's making an opportunity to turn up when something won't turn up by itself. Oftentimes, people in the marketplace, out in the world, they have great Bible questions. They need good Bible answers. And that's our purpose, is to give them those answers. This means we have to be ready with the Scriptures. Because uh, it's the Scriptures that's going to save a person, having the knowledge of God and then being able to obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. But we need to have the the scriptures, the answers for them, when they have questions about God and Christ and the church and the plan of salvation. As Peter said in 1 Peter 3, 15, be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you of the reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Always be ready. And the only way we can do that is storing up the word of God in our hearts, memorizing the scriptures. It's important. Members of the Lord's Church are always looking for opportunities to make money. What about always looking for opportunities to seek and to save that which is lost? We also need to invest our jobs or our businesses for Christ. You know, one can use his job or his business for the Lord, kind of like Peter did with his boat. He allowed Jesus to use that as a platform to preach to the people on the shore. I know of one doctor who used to always put Bible tracts out in his waiting room. Another businessman, he would send a tract with every statement that he sent to his clients. Today, hundreds of businessmen are now applying Christian principles and running their business. They're not trying to hide their religious convictions anymore, and their businesses are doing well. One man had this motto over his door, God first, others second, business third. And that's where it belongs. But we can still use the business to support Christianity. So our assets, we need to use them in our Father's business. But there's also principles or rules that we have to apply to that business. To work for Christ in the marketplace and in the world, we have to be honest. A lot of people ask, well, can you actually run a business on Christian principles? Well, the truth is, religion and actually business, they go hand in hand. They lay side by side, and you really can't separate one another. Remember what God has joined together, let not man put us under. Christianity is the most practical system in the world. And the challenge to live right, to think right, to do right, to feel right applies in the marketplace, out in the world too. Not just at home, not just at church. In Genesis chapters 39 through 47, we read of a man by the name of Joseph. Now, he graduated from being a houseboy to an Egyptian captain to an overseer of a prison to one of the biggest business adventures ever recorded. The economy of the whole world landed right in his lap, and he ran it all by divine law. He couldn't have run it any other way and been successful. Paul was a businessman. He was a tent maker by trade, according to Acts chapter 18, verses 1 through 3. Tent making was an honorable trade, made him a good living, even while he was preaching full time. We also learned that Onesimus was profitable unto Paul there in Rome. Remember, Onesimus, he was that runaway slave. But Paul knew he couldn't keep him for his own benefit. He belonged to Philemon. He was his personal property. He was his slave. And as Paul said in Romans 12, 17, provide all things honest in the sight of all men. So Christianity does need to be kept in our businesses because the way that we conduct our affairs actually has a lot to do with the way the people look at the church of which we are members of. And they're going to judge the church by you, how you act and how you react. So yes, we need to be careful what we do. Honesty is not to be confined only to the church building. 
The Bible teaches us that we are to be honest in all of our dealings with people. And if our religion cannot keep us honest out in the world, it's not going to be able to take us to heaven. Godliness and uprightness is man's means of introducing God to his neighbor. And, don't, and believe me, people recognize that. Another rule of business is to be punctual. You can't run a successful business by always being behind in your appointments. Remember, another man's time is just as important as your time is. And if we're not punctual in business, we're going to suffer the loss of the respect and the confidence out there in the world. People won't have any faith in us. Jesus didn't wait until he was 30 years of age to begin preaching the gospel. He began that at a very early age, being busy doing the Father's business. So yes, Christians must be punctual. We need to be doing what we can as soon as we can and being faithful about it. Being fair is also a very important rule in business. We have to practice the golden rule. All things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them, Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. You know, there's a lot of business deals out there that kind of borderline on right and wrong. And a good way to determine which is best is applying that golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Put yourself in the other man's shoes and ask you how would you react. And a lot of times, it'll cause you to make the right decision. Businessmen who do not practice regularity are going to fail. Imagine a businessman who opens his store only a couple of weeks out of the year, or maybe just one day out of the week. I can pretty much tell you he's not going to gain any profit out of that business. God demands of us, Christian businessmen, regular devotion. If we're not giving, if we're not living for God on Monday, we cannot be a Christian on Sunday. You know what makes a musician good? Regular practice. You know what makes a blacksmith's arm strong? Regular practice. You know what makes good Christian uh, personal workers? Regular practice. Now, the Lord never promised that what we were going to have to do in the church is going to be easy. But whatever we decide to do, it will grow if we turn it into a habit, if we have continued practice of it. And Christians are not to be lazy. In fact, Christianity forbids being slothful in business, Romans chapter 12, verse 11, especially when we're talking about the Father's business. And here's something else. As we work out in the world and in the marketplace, kindness has to be exhibited. We do not have the right to be unkind to anybody. I don't care what's going on in our life, if we're sick, if we're worried, if we're nervous, if we've been wronged, if we've suffered loss, we still don't have the right to be unkind to someone else. Christianity is to be something that is to be exhibited in every minute of our lives. We certainly don't have the right to pick the people we want to be kind to and, and ignore all the others. And there's several reasons that we have to be kind. Kindness elevates and brings out the best in people. Not to just those who are receiving the kindness, but also to those who are giving the kindness. Kindness is the only insurance for peace. Unkind acts and words have led to wars and rumors of wars. You've probably done this before, as I'm sure all of us have, have spoken some unkind words to someone. And believe me, you know it never helps the situation. We show kindness because Christ and God have always shown kindness to the world. It's always safe and profitable to, to follow the example of Jesus Christ. And Jesus gave us a very good example. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 23, Peter says, Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not. He never retaliated. And kindness has such rich rewards. This includes financial, 
mental and spiritual rewards. Kindness brings joy and peace, and it brings the favor of God for us. Remember the words of Paul in Galatians 6.10, As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men. And I'll also think about Ephesians 4.32, And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. These are some very good rules for the business of Christianity, and if we don't follow these rules, we're not going to be successful. When we are faithful in doing God's business, we can be profited in so many ways. While presenting Christ and his way of life in the marketplace, we're actually working out our own salvation with fear and trembling. We're doing God's business. And the time is ripe for spreading God's news. The, the fields are white unto harvest. There's no reason for us to wait to be spreading the gospel. There are so many lost people in this world and so few Christians to spread the gospel. If we really believe in Jesus Christ, we're going to be out there sharing that gospel with somebody else. That's our business. We ought is good doctrine. We will is good practice. Our Father's business is about spreading the word of God wherever and whenever we are, whenever we have the opportunity. And there's a good reason for that. Now, I realize that nobody can converse from the dead with the living. But I have in my hand a poem that somebody wrote. It's entitled, A Letter from Hell. And I could almost see someone who is lost. They've died. They've gone to the wrong place. And they're writing a letter to one of their Christian friends. I want to read what it says. It says, My friend, I stand in judgment now and feel that you're to blame somehow. On earth I walked with you day by day and never did you point the way. You knew the Lord in truth and glory, but never did you tell the story. My knowledge then was very dim. You could have led me safe to him. Though we lived together on earth, you never told me of the second birth. And now I stand this day condemned because you failed to mention him. You taught me many things, that's true. I called you friend and trusted you. But now I learn that it's too late. You could have kept me from this fate. We walk by day and talk by night, and yet you showed me not the light. You let me live and love and die. You knew I'd never live on high. Yes, I called you a friend in life and trusted you through joy and strife. And yet on coming to the end, I cannot now call you my friend. You ever had the opportunity to tell somebody the saving gospel and you didn't do it? Before you knew it, they passed from this life. This could be a letter to you. Our Father's business is about spreading the word, saving the lost. Jesus came to seek and to save that which is lost, Luke 19, verse 10. He was about the Father's business. And we, as followers of Christ, need to be doing the same thing. And on the great day of judgment, all of our works are going to be made manifest, 1 Corinthians 3.13. How are we going to look when we stand before Jesus Christ on that great day of judgment? Will he look at you and say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of thy Lord. Or will he look on you with sadness and say, depart from me, ye that work iniquity, I never knew you. If you're not in his kingdom, you're not going to receive any type of reward. You see, if you go into the world or if you're not uh, uh, working for this certain company, you're not going to receive a paycheck from that company. You have to be of that firm. You have to be of that company. And the same thing is true with the church. You're not going to receive any rewards if you're not a member of the Lord's church. And you can't join the Lord's church like you would some man-made denomination. There's only one way to become a member of the church, and that is through obedience of the gospel 
being born of water in the Spirit, being baptized into Christ for the remission of your sins, believing in Jesus Christ, confessing his name before men, repenting of your sins, and then having your sins washed away in baptism. And then the Lord will add you to his church, which is the body of the saved, Acts chapter 2, verse 47, but you can't join it. If you haven't obeyed the gospel, please don't hesitate. If you know what you need to do, do it. Don't put it off because you won't receive your paycheck in the end. Let us ever be about our Father's business. And if you're not faithful, you need to change that right now. If there's anything that we can help you with this morning, whatever it may be, make sure you're in the right spot before you breathe your last breath on this earth. If you have a need, let us help you. Why don't you come and stand? Stand while we're, why don't you come while we stand and sing? <laughs>